Greetings in the name of Yahuwah and his son Yahusha Mashiach. My name is Malak Shalomo and today is the 20th of February 2023. The time is 11.16 p.m. And um, I was thinking about, I was actually doing some work on Bookmap and I was transferring some levels from Trading View onto Bookmap. So kind of planning out my trades, right? So I was... I was doing that and I was thinking, you know, maybe I should do a video showing how I use these levels or how I create these um these notes and levels um from Trade and View onto Bookmap. So um let's see here. Let me jump into this here. This is so these concepts here are from let me just bring this across. From this book right here, Secrets of a Pivot Boss by Frank Franklin Ochoa, O. Ochoa, and um, Revealing Proven Methods for Profiting in the Market, right? So these are um, pivot, pivot um, like floor pivots and Camarilla pivots and stuff like that. They break down, this book breaks down a lot of these concepts and what they mean in relation to price action and stuff like that. So... First of all, we're going to start off with the money zone, right? So let's see on indicators on trading view. Let's see here. This is the indicator right here, right? So if you want to go search for it, that's the indicator right there on trading view. So this is the money zone, right? So it's like a mini market profile. And um, it gives you value area high, value area low, and the POC levels, right? So <clears throat> that's the value area high. Well, actually, let me start off like this. This was yesterday's value area high. Or, yes. So this was yesterday's value area high. This was the upper POC. This was the lower POC. And this was... Um, value area low right so what the indi indicator actually has is this feature as well so if i go into here i could enable developing money zone right so when i enable that at the end of a trading day it could show me what the levels will be for the next day right so when i tap this on you see those levels come back. I usually have them as a cross, but they keep on going back to a line. Let me just fix that. Right, so I have them. The, the lines are like when they're actually on the day, when the levels are set. The developing ones, I have them as a cross to just make sure I could you know specify the difference so looking at this relationship here the yesterday's value area high was up at 1496 right this is the ES 5 minute chart right so now the value area high is going to be 4089.25 right and the value area low is going to be 40 75 75 and the priors prior level was 40 71 right right so you see those are the levels right there and that was the prior session this is going to be tomorrow's session right so it's an inside value relationship Right, so I want to know that in advance so I could I could um like plan my trades on price action dealing with these levels, right? So if I'm looking at this as an inside value day and the inside value day is suggesting a breakout, right? I would look to probably take something like probably a rejection of the value area low and then look for price to move down right 
Let's see here. Or I could probably take something like this. A rejection of the puck level and then break down the value area low and get the breakout that way. So with having this on trading view, right? I also like to look I like to look at book map when I'm trading. So I look at book map a lot, right? So I wanna see what these these book map um bubbles, you know those let me show you here. Right, so you know on book map it has these bubbles and stuff like that that shows you um it's like the time and sales um shown in this kind of way, right? So instead of numbers just running across the screen, the is captured in these bubbles and these bubbles could tell you, well, okay, this is a hundred and nine at forty four thousand sixty nine, right? So when you get to see, let's see here if I can make this a little bigger. You get to see exhaustion like here on the ask. So this this level here is the ask, the green is the bid, right? So you get to see where um, price is actually transacted. And it'll tell you if it's on the ask, right? So you see it could say ask 19, right? So... I created something here right let me just show you so in the notes section I ended I, I started putting these value area highs from the money zone and the money zone lower and upper park right and that was the value area low right there so let me just clear this up let me just make that bigger right so you can see that's the value of your low level so i could actually see i don't have to look at trade and view i could actually see when this is coming up to the value area low level right and i could see what the bubbles are doing at this uh, i could see what price action is doing at this level right and the camera r3 because i'm looking for rejections around these levels tomorrow so I want to see what price is doing at these levels so I just make these notes so let me show you how I do that so let's say well first of all you have to go one second you have to click on one of these right and then you hit plus and then you pick one of these anything you could pick one of these here and you hit create but when it creates it you could then go to this this right here and you change it to notes to custom notes right and you could change the color i have all of them as black and there you have an extra note um column right so you can put different um, different levels in different in different node columns, right? So let me just take that out. Right. So this column here is the money zone. This is for the pivots, and this is um, VPOC, right? So what I do with VPOC is like let's say um, VPOC moved up here a little bit, right? I would mark this level right here as a variable high volume node right because it moved right so it moved from this level to this level so I mark that level that it moved up to because it usually comes back and tests these levels right so this is a level here as well this is a level where it's at right now this is a level where it was at but it's not on the screen right now just like this one right here as well right so that's for this column is more for like um for for the vpoc and heavy volume nodes and stuff high volume nodes and stuff like that and this one here is from a four hour volume profile that i do that i use from um anna cooling's quantum trading Right, so let me just show you that.
Right. So that's a volume profile from from Anna Cooling's quantum trading um, indicators. And each one of these red lines coming out from the indicator is a high volume node, right? This one here as well. And uh, the highest one here is VPOC, which is I have it as this dotted line as well. Right. So each one of these, I mark them on my notes as well as well let me just go back over to book map right so you could see you could see here this is one of the levels at the bottom and here's another level and here's another level now these over here eight bid actually mark where there's heavy bids or heavy liquidity in the book right so these levels are here like over a long period of time they're staying in the book they're not just jumping in randomly and just pulling their orders right they really want to get filled at these levels so I actually mark these levels as well so i could have a reference right so when you're when you're making trade plans and I'm looking for rejections at this level and stuff like that, or maybe at value area high, I could actually see that there's a heavy liquidity right here. So it might actually go past value area high a little bit, hit this level, or maybe just underneath and then reverse, right? So all of these things I'm taking into consideration when I'm planning trades and stuff, right? So let's see. Here's another column I did for, this is the bottom central pivot. This is the pivot and that's the top central pivot right there for tomorrow. So let me just go back to trade and view and pull that up. Right, so this is the indicator here is pivot boss. Let me go to the indicators on trade and view. And this is the indicator right here. Let me just highlight it. Right, so that's the indicator there if you want to go get that indicator, right? So let's see. All right, so when you open the indicator up, you could show tomorrow pivots, right? So when you when you click, when you um, highlight that one right there, that's to show tomorrow's pivots. Then you go over here, scroll down, and this is all the developing pivots, right? So above here, this is the pivots for the day you're watching. And for the next day, this is the developing point um, pivot developing bc developing tc developing r1 s1 and this is the camarilla h3 which i call r3 and developing l3 which i call s3 right so let's let's see here and again i have them in um in a cross format so wait let me just let me put on yesterday's so you can see the relationship. Right. So in this rela in this relationship today, it had the top central here. This is the pivot, and that's the bottom central pivot, right? But the developing relationship is showing bottom central pivot here. The pivot is here. And the top central pivot is now down here, right? So what we have here is an overlapping lower value relationship, right? Because this level is lower than this one here, which is today's lowest level, right? But this one here is still above it. So it's overlapping low, right? If it was totally lower, this here would be below 
today's level, which is here, right? So it's showing you an overlapping lower value relationship. And what I do is I just, you can see these levels right here, 40, 75, 50. Let me just go back up, go back over to to book map. And you can see that's the level right there. And I just, I just plot them in. And let me just show how I plot them in here. Now, when you do this, you can actually make a template so you could all, you could just do it really quick, right? So let's say I wanted to put a pivot level at this level right here, right? Or I wanted to create one. So I would go choose a color, go back to input, put a name, right hit templates then I'll hit add and then scroll down select the one that I just did come back here hit OK and you see it pops up right there right so that's how you add those um, levels in in the notes right so I don't want that so I'm gonna actually go back to the templates because I already have a pivot, so I don't need that one. This is my pivot level right here. I mean, my pivot template. So, if you don't want one of these, or you made a mistake, you just delete it. And hit delete, and that's it. Yeah, and that's how like I use this to plan out my trades and stuff for tomorrow. So. In this overlapping scenario, and actually, let me let me show you one more thing here with the Camarillas. So let's see here. So this level right here, this is Camarilla S3, right? This green line right here at 4076.50, right? Now what's happening here is that this developing R3, which is this red line just below it, is Camarilla R3 for tomorrow, right? So Camarilla R3 is going to be below yesterday's Camarilla S3, which is making it a lower value relationship, right? And Camarilla S3 is now down here, right? So it's a lower value relationship, right? Now, in this scenario, you see price action in the ETH. We're moving down. We're getting some support here. We're creating some, some lower highs right here. So let's see here. Right, so we're creating some lower highs and maybe maybe we might get like a, a pullback, right? Now, in this lower value relationship, if we open below S3, let's see, let's, let's bring this down a little bit. Right, so if we open below S3, right, then you get like a, it's a, a trade setup for like a, a retest of S3. Let me just see if I can do this. Let's say we open here, we're going to retest S3 and then look for the continuation short, right? That's my trade plan, that's my trade setup and I got that from um, one of the thesis from Privet Boss, right? So I incorporated that into my into my um, my trade plan, right? So in a lower value relationship, if we open below this level, retest S3 and enter here for the short, right? Now... If we don't open below S3 and we push up towards R3, you're looking for the short here at R3 and a continuation back down to like S3, right? Or if it breaks down even further, then 
You know, I mean, that'll be great. But and let's see if that happens. That's a. Uh, that's a 11 point 11 point 75 move right so it's a decent little move nothing too crazy but um we probably might get to, if it really sells off tomorrow we could get to like um anchored view up here which is this line here 40 to the 6 and that's if it if it gets really weak you know what i'm saying so if you do get a rejection from our tree down to this level here that'll be like a 39 point move right so that's that'll be a great trade for me so if if that does materialize that'll be great but it depends it all depends on what the market is doing you know i could wish for um a setup a, a plus setup but it all depends on what the market is going to give me right so and again this is another thing here from pivot boss right so you see how this pivot level tomorrow is going to be coinciding with this pivot um camarilla r3 level right so that's a heavy rejection level a heavy resistance level right so i'll be looking out for that as well so if price does decide to move up tonight or creep up a little bit creep up and we get here by tomorrow morning i'm looking for the rejection at the open right and if it does break above then it's just a rejection of the thesis and you're looking for maybe a retest of r3 and go to go forward right to go up and let me just show you here And you can see on um, bookmap, I actually have those already in different columns, but I can see the double pivot zone right here, right? Because they are lining up around the same level, right? And when I open it up, right? So when price action comes around this level, I'll be prepared, right? So I could just see it. I don't have to, to switch over to trade and view to see it. I have the levels on the both side right so it's all preparation and just um, planning the trade and and making it easy for myself to execute when the trade comes about you know what i'm saying and that's camarilla r3 so if we break down and you can see we have a bunch of heavy liquidity down here right so this might attract price like overnight let's see above it if there's as much so you can see the liquidity is heavy to, to the downside right so it might just draw price down tonight you know what i'm saying we might hit something like like one of these these heavy liquidities or one of these here like 40 64 it all depends on what happens when the the london um session opens and you know what those traders want to do in the european session um right now it's looking like if it wants to it wants to break down so um we'll see what happens tomorrow so if it does break down maybe we'll be above s3 and probably get like a breakdown of s3 retest and to go short you know and let's see here there's a bunch of you see i have them marked here so there's a bunch of um high bids down here as well heavy bids so it's a bunch of liquidity to the downside and i also have this annual anchored view up marked here as well and there's also liquidity around it right so these players are anticipating that price will come back to this level so um I think it's a probable outcome you know i have a little bearish bias as well so i'm mindful of that so um let's see how it goes you know what i'm saying i just want the market to give me the trade i don't want to try and make the trade you know what i'm saying because i do have a habit of well before i used to be a little stubborn with trades and 
um, going off tilt with trades and just fighting against the market and stuff like that. But I'm not doing stuff like that no more. You know what I'm saying? I learned my lesson. So whatever the market gives me is what I'm going to trade. So that's how I use these um, these columns right here, these notes, money zone, column, pivots, column. And this is for like volume, the, vo the VPOC and heavy volume notes and stuff like that. And also for like heavy bids, right? Yeah, and that's that's my video right there, man, for um, how you can use indicators, indicator levels on your notes on bookmap. And you could have it right there when you're looking at price action and reading the bubbles and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all got something from it. And let's see here. If you all want to check out this book and learn some more about um, these pivot levels and Camarilla pivots, floor pivots, central pivot ranges, um, the money zone level, which is a mini market profile, you could check out this book. It's a little expensive, but it's worth it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of valuable, really, really valuable information in this. And it also shows you about volume profile as well. So check out this book, you know what I'm saying? Let's see. Oh, man, I didn't switch over. Let me pull that back up. Right, so this is the book right here, right? So volume profile, money zone, mini market profile, floor pivots, central floor pivots, Camarilla pivots. It's all inside here, right? And also I was talking about these double pivot zones. It, it shows you about how these double pivots, like when they line up together, how they could reinforce like resistance and support. So... You know, check out this book. Check out this book. All right, y'all. And that's my video on how I take these indicators from Trading View, make note columns on Bookmap so I could have it right there. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be easy to look at and easy to just make a quick decision on a trade. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. So it's Malak Shalomo and y'all trade safe and stay blessed.